Welding is more than just a job on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. It's exacting. It requires explicit procedures to join more than 100,000 pieces of steel pipe into an 800-mile pipeline from Prudhoe Bay to Valdez. This part of the pipeline route is in central Alaska, a few miles south of the Yukon River. The pipe is being installed above and below ground as soil conditions dictate. This typical pipeline spread, which works pretty much like an assembly line, includes the X-ray crew, welding crews, and the pipe gang. A number of highly skilled craftsmen are doing specific jobs on each joint of pipe welded. Let's follow the story of... There are many different types of welds on the project, but the type that is the most difficult and the most critical is the kind that will join this 48-inch pipe section with this section. We're going to watch while weld 38,031 is made from start to finish. Then we'll see the radiography crew x-ray it. We'll see the x-ray film and watch the interpretation. The pipe came from the mill with a 30-degree bevel on the ends. The bevels are cleaned by sandblasting all dust, dirt, oil, or other material which could cause weld problems. The pipe is a low-carbon, low-alloy steel made specifically for welding in the Arctic environment. Most of the pipe has a yield strength of 65,000 pounds per square inch. Two pipe wall thicknesses are used, 462 and 562 thousandths of an inch, or about one-half inch thick. Next, the pipe ends are preheated with propane torches to a temperature range between 150 and 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Quality control welding inspectors monitor each step of the welding process. Here, the inspector verifies the proper pipe temperature. The two sections of pipe are aligned for welding using an internal alignment clamp, which holds the sections of pipe in place. Craftsmen in this operation include stabbers who align the pipe and spacers to ensure proper alignment and spacing between the two pipes. The 30 degree bevel angle, the land thickness of 1 16th of an inch, and the root opening of 3 30 seconds of an inch must conform to the approved welding procedure. They do, and we're ready to weld. The first part of the weld is called the root pass. Here we use the gas metal arc process where infusion is obtained by heating with an electric arc between a consumable filler metal and the pipe. This process provides a sound root weld bead with good strength and ductility. This first weld pass, or bead, is the most crucial of all passes. It's the foundation for building a sound weld. Welders make it look easy, but it's demanding and exhausting work. When the root pass is completed, the two welders move on to the next joint, and the welder's helpers move in. They power brush the weld and do any grinding that may be required to remove surface irregularities. At this point, only a small portion of the total weld is completed. Next, two more welders come in to do the hot pass. This pass is made primarily for burning out or melting out any unnoticed surface defects. This hot pass, as are all remaining passes, is made with the shielded metal arc process, which is the more conventional of the two welding processes used on the project. The next pass is the first fill pass and the welders are beginning to deposit a little more weld metal. Depending on the wall thickness, there are still three or four passes left. Since this is a 462 pipe, we have three passes to complete the weld. Now the firing line moves in. All of the welders on the main line are from Pipeliner's local 798 is a union recognized for expertise in building pipelines throughout the world. Even though they have individual credentials, each welder is required to take and pass a series of strict welding tests, including radiographic and destructive testing, before they can work on this project. The firing line welders make the second and third fill passes and complete the weld with a final cap pass. 
The welding inspector monitors the parameters of the weld with such tools as a stopwatch to measure rate of travel and a tong meter to measure proper amperages. As the weld joint is getting wider, a slight oscillation of the electrode is necessary to tie in or fuse the side walls of the weld joint. And now we have the finished product, a weld consisting of six individual weld passes. The root pass, the hot pass, the first fill, the second fill, the third fill pass, and finally the cap pass. If you could unwrap a finished weld and stretch it out, this one with six weld passes would be 75 feet long. The welding inspector has inspected the weld and now marks it VAE, visually acceptable externally. It is now ready for radiographic examination. All the welds on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline are radiographed to ensure the weld quality meets specifications. More than 12 feet of film encased in cassette belts are wrapped around the outside of the weld. The weld identification, in this case 38,031, is inserted by the quality control inspector to be recorded on the film. This automatic X-ray crawler will travel through the completed half-mile section of pipe, stopping at and radiographing each weld. Each radiographic exposure takes about two minutes. The exposed film is taken to this mobile lab where it is processed automatically and then interpreted. The radiograph is coming out of the automatic processor. Now the radiographic interpreter will review and interpret the radiograph for weld defects, such as porosity or gas pockets which is small spherical or elongated holes or voids in the weld, or slag inclusions, which is electrode coating material entrapped between individual weld passes. Also cracks, which may have occurred due to excessive handling of the pipe with only the root pass completed. Another defect is inadequate penetration, which is a condition where the root pass is not completely penetrated into the pipe. It looks like Al has found one minor defect in our weld. This darker area in the center of the weld is elongated porosity and it measures a quarter of an inch in length. The maximum allowable length for this defect is one eighth of an inch, so the weld must be repaired. As this defect is in the center of the weld, and because of its type, we know it's located in the root pass, so we will repair it from the inside of the pipe. The radiograph also shows that the root pass has good penetration, which results in internal weld reinforcement. By grinding the internal reinforcement flush with the pipe, we will be able to complete the repair. 878 to 2035, come in, Roy. Yeah, 10-4, John. Yeah, Roy. It looks like we need a repair on well 38,031. There's a gas pocket in the bead pass right at 12 o'clock. I wonder if you'll have the welding foreman send a helper inside the pipe. To repair pipe this surface defect. And, uh, a welder and his helper will travel about a quarter of a mile down into the pipe. Uh, this is all it'll take to make that repair. Over. Other defects, such as slag inclusions or incomplete fusion, require the removal of weld metal by grinding and reheating the weld area to be repaired and then re-welding. After grinding, our weld is re-x-rayed and receives an OK from the interpreter. Then the weld documentation records are reviewed and approvals obtained from quality control and quality assurance representatives. When all of the signatures are obtained from the authorized personnel, the weld is released by marking. Hey, that's what we've been waiting for. Okay, P30. Real good. The pipe is ready for the final test. That won't take place until the pipe is completely installed in this section. Then. The pipe will be filled with water and pressure tested to 125% of the maximum operating pressure and held for 24 hours. That was weld 38,031. We picked it at random. We could have followed any of the 60,000 field welds along the project, and the techniques of the welding, radiography, and inspection would have been similar. This Trans-Alaska Pipeline project is demanding welding precision never before required on a pipeline. Those demands are being met.